Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. Welcome to day 26 of the 100 Days of Centangle 100 Day Project 2019. Thank you so much for being here today. And our pattern for today is Chorus by Tomas Padros, who is very dear to me. If you guys aren't aware, uh, back when he first came on the scene, I wrote an article on him for uh, my Artist Focus post uh, on my blog, and I will try to put a link to that below. But if you're um, here on my YouTube channel, then you can check my Artist Focus playlist. It just has two things in it. But uh, Tomas's uh, art and his favorite music are there, and uh, you will really enjoy that. So um, check that out. So I chose Tomas because I find his patterns really intriguing for their woven look. And um, a lot of people struggle with them, and I thought I would choose one that's fairly simple to, to grasp. Um, I'm not calling anyone anyone um, uh, slow, but I am saying that these can be sort of daunting. And I did a quick um, tutorial on pickpocket that I need to redo, uh, but uh, we're going to do chorus, and it's not very hard. You guys are going to like the way it looks, though. This is very much a shading-based pattern. So I don't think I'm going to use this entire tile but I am going to um, focus on the middle of this. So in Tomas's step out, let me turn this over here. He has, let's see. He has you start with these little seed shapes in a row and then repeating like that okay I have trouble keeping these in a straight line and there are several ways you can approach that if you would like to keep them uh, sort of um, in line you can lightly sketch pencil lines in like that I'm going to use these pencil lines And I'm going to make some of them wider and some of them narrower just to show you um, a different effect. And I'm going to do my seed shapes this way. Now I'm going to turn this and sort of see how I did. Not bad. So then I'm going to turn it the other direction and I'm going to go back through and finish these off and go ahead and black them. By doing it this way, my seed shapes are a tiny bit more consistent. The lines are a little bit more straight. And my inner perfectionist is a little more quiet. Though we're learning not to listen to her. He has such a mind for these 3D patterns because of his history in teaching um, high school and college kids, um, technical drawing, that type of thing. And he's just such a, such a phenomenal individual. Okay. All right. Interesting. <laughs> now, step two. Go between your first two columns. and just makes, make a curved line down like that. And you're gonna wanna repeat this straight down. Now I made mine a little bit longer on this one where we had a little extra room and that's gonna be okay.
All right, that was a little wiggly. You guys get the impression though. All right. Now, skip a row and repeat. Well, <laughs> this is gonna be entertaining. And you can make them um, match up with the row before as far as their length goes, or you can make them different. It's entirely up to you and what you want this to look like. Now, 180 degrees on your tile. And let's do the same thing going down on that row that we skipped. Just like this. Okay? Now, um, imagine there's another row here on each side, and I'm going to finish this side off. and do the same thing here. Now, one last thing on the ink and we'll be done. Okay, now a lot of you will know how to do this. Uh, some of you may not, so let me just uh, quickly show you. What we're going to do is we're going to connect each of these little funnels um, with, a, with this type of thing. so that it looks like the funnel is going down into uh, this dark hole. I'm trying to remember what other one we did that was sort of like this. It doesn't come to me now. One of the first ones. So you want to finish all of these ends so that they look similar to that. And if you get one where one side is longer than the other, that's gonna be okay too. Fill in the black and just extend your lines down and you'll be good. Almost done. I think I got most of them. Okay, so when we're done inking, we have something that looks like this. It wasn't really hard to figure out, but it does have a cool effect. Now, let me show you what shading does for this, which is a lot. So the trick to shading this is something really easily easy. You're going to shade on each side of the funnel. lay down some graphite. It doesn't have to be a lot. Of course with me, you know, it's always too much, but I like it.
All right, let's do this one and then I'll blend this out and we'll get it in the pattern and we'll be done for today. You're gonna wanna check out, check in tomorrow. We're gonna do another one of Tomasa's patterns. It's going to be a fun one. So shading on this drops uh, the parts that you want to, to look behind into the background. And that's part of one of those funnels. So we shade that. I need to trim off my tortillon. It's getting a little goopy on the front. So not a very good job of blending on my part, but uh, the idea is is there. And so you can see what a huge difference that makes in, in having this look like uh, the parts are folding behind the funnels. So this is gonna be fun. We're gonna put it in the pattern now and see what we can come up with now. Um, we're going to do this, still looking for a good grid pattern, aren't I? We're going to do this right here by Batumber. So, I just set it down. This one looks pretty good. Yeah. All right, so I am using my zero, whoa, zero one in black now. Bless you, Simba. Simba says hi to Karma. All right, so I'm going to do this. I think I'm going to do this down this way. So um, I don't know which one I'm gonna use. Starting with your inner auras for separation. Then, this is not going to give us what we want, is it? That's still going to be cool. We're going to go for it. We're just going to make a single column one. And then we'll have funnels that go right down into the next section, which will be okay. That'll be cool. I completely gave up on my method, didn't I? Went right back to the old way. All right, so we're gonna take it down here. This one's gonna be short. Okay, then I'm gonna go ahead and take these up. be okay. Then we're simply going to well this one's determined to be difficult. Alright, and we're going to go over 
something like this. Okay, that might be interesting. Let's try it out. And then this one's going to go like this. Okay, that's gonna look cool. Let's get this shaded. And we will be done. All right, so shading behind your funnels. They're funnels because they look like that, you know. There we go. And the way we've got this, we probably won't fit a lot of graphite in, but a little bit will work really well here. All right, I think this will definitely probably need a second shading run. So let's blend some of this out. probably have to grab my mono eraser, my mono zero eraser, that teeny tiny one, and give this a go. I need to find one of my teeny tiny tortillons for this. Tortillon. Okay, I think I think I'm going to take another run at this real quickly, right in the corners, sort of darken that. Just right there in the little crease. Give that a little bit more depth. Got a light shining on here, it's hard for me to see. All right, I think I've got this. So we will gently go over this. It looks like the tooth of my paper is getting a little bit upset over here, starting to peel off. So we'll just very gently rub here. And I may fix this tortillon and go in here and blend this a little bit better. But, see that paper's peeling up right there. I don't know why though, I haven't really done anything on this square. All right, well, for better or worse, <laughs> this is Chorus by Tomas Padros. And I love it. I'm going to be working the shading probably again, but um, I hope that you guys have found this fairly simple too. Um, we're going to do one that is no thinking tomorrow and just fun. So I bet you guys probably can figure out what that is, but show up tomorrow and find out on the 20, oh my goodness, the 27th day of the 100 day project. Thank you guys so much for support, your support and I will see you tomorrow.